Hi, everyone. It's Kim from Art Anthology. We are going to get started in just a couple minutes. We'll give everyone a chance to get on and find us and be able to join us. And then we're going to get started. I have something a little different planned today. We are going to be working in our art journals, which we have not done before. And we're going to be doing some cut work pages, which I love to do. They're very detailed, but I have found an easier way to do them than the traditional way. So we'll just give it a few more seconds as people get on and join us. So hello to everyone who's getting on and joining us. Thank you for being with us today. And I'll give it about 15 more seconds and then we're going to get started here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I know others will still be continuing to join us. I'm having to come to you a little differently today. Um, I'm being live streamed to you, but I am pre-recorded because I'm having some challenges with getting onto Facebook. But Robbie and Jennifer are on and they will be able to answer your questions like they've done in the past in the chat. And if there is a question that they need more information on, I'm on standby with them and I can provide them with that information so they can respond to your questions. But other than that, we're just going to have our normal fun day and I hope to teach you something new today in your art journals. So what we're going to be doing is creating some cut work pages. And when I talk about cutwork pages, it's sort of like, think of like a tunnel card where you have an opening that kind of gives you a peek through to the next page. And then I have three pages in my little art journal that I'm using so I can see through to the third page. Traditionally, cut work is done either with your own design that you draw out on your page and then you cut it out with an X-Acto or you use a stencil for the design and then cut that out. So this would be an example where I've used a stencil if I wanted this as part of my cut work and then I could take an X-Acto and cut all these little squares out. Well, I just don't have the patience for that. And so I was looking through some of these single layer dyes, dyes from Stamplistic and I thought those would be ideal for cut work pages. There's no way I could cut this out with an X-Acto, but I can cut this die into different pieces. And that's what I have done. So let me just show you a few samples and then we're gonna get started creating our pages. So this is the first one and mine are, like I said, three pages. And I'm only working on the right-hand side of my book. I can flip it over and do the left-hand side, which I'll show you, but I'm only worried about the right-hand side today. So here's my first page. And then when I flip it over, it reveals my second page. And you can peek through and see a little bit of my third page. So then I could work backwards. This one isn't too exciting and I haven't done that yet. I'm just, again, focusing on the right-hand side pages. But you can see how I took this die mesmerized and I was able to cut this apart and come up with my different layers. So let me show you another one real quick, just so you can get an idea of how easy it is to change these up. So this is my next one. Again, it's three pages. So here's my top page. Here's my second page. And then here's my third page. So you can see how I can do so many different things, decorate them however I want. And then on this one where I work backwards, I have a lot more options and a little more excitement with this one. And I just need to add the pen work 
and some decoration around the outside edge, but you can see how it works both ways. And I want to just show you on this one, one little thing that we're doing differently here on each of these. This one is a white die cut with black pen work. And that's what we're going to do today because I think it'll be easier for you to see what I'm doing. On this one, this is a black die cut with white pen work. And then I thought, oh, I'm going to take it one further. And this one I have only put the dies in. I haven't done any pen work, but I colored the die. So this die is the forever die. And after I cut it out of white cardstock, I did color it before I put it into my pages. So this time I cut the die into two pieces. So my background is just a stencil. So we're going to talk about more of these individually as we go along, but let's go back, start from the beginning. And we're going to use this die and I'm going to cut it out the same way, but I want to show you how to start your pages from the very, very beginning. So let's do that. Let me slide this over. I've already got my die cut, cut out, and this is white cardstock. And I think this is about 65 pounds. It's not super, super heavy. It doesn't need to be real heavy. And this again is the mesmerized die. So the first thing I do after I cut my dies out is I want, I'm going to cut this apart, but I kind of want to have it all still lined up as it originally is. So I take a pencil and I just kind of draw an imaginary straight line up wherever on this die. You pick any point that you want. And hopefully you can see where I have my little pencil mark up there. And this is going to be my top point because then when I lay it in my book, if I can line these back up, I know my design will be in the right order as well. So then my next thing is, how am I going to cut this apart? So when I look at these, there's many different ways I could cut this apart. I know I'm going to have three pages and to use the center on the back page is very easy to start that way. So that's what I did. And there's no way I can cut a nice neat circle around that. So I did get my layering dies out and I just looked around at the different sizes and laid them down there and just pick one that I liked and I cut that out and I've already done that. So let me just pull that out. So there's my center piece that I'm going to start with. And you're going to notice it's not cut out perfectly. It's a little thicker over here than it is over here, but it really, really does not matter that there's a little minor thickness. You're never going to notice that. So then I'm going to look at this and I'm going to think, okay, where else can I cut and keep maybe the next center type of design for my second page? So I'm going to follow this one just because I have gone ahead to prep some pages so we're not having to watch paint dry. So what I'm going to do is I want this design here and I'm going to cut apart the rest of it. So let me see, what do I need to do to cut this up? I can just start here and I'm just going to clip these little corners and I want this to look nice. So I'm going to try to make all these to a little point here. And again, you cut these up any way that you want. Normally, if I were using this die again, I would not go back and look at what I did before. And I might cut it the exact same way or I might cut it different just depending on how I was looking at it that day. So there's no right or wrong way to cut these up. But again, because I've gone ahead and prepped some pages, I, I know that if I cut it this way, I won't have any problems with it fitting what I've already prepped. Okay. All right. So there's going to be my second page. So then I've got this left and I want to clean this up. I don't want these little bits hanging off. So I'll cut that off. And then 
I'm like, well, could I do anything else to open it up? Do I want to change it up? So what I did was, if we look back to this one, I cut out this little bar piece in between. So let me just go around and I'm going to quickly cut those little pieces out. And again, this does not take that long. It's not that hard. There's no right or wrong, just whatever you want to do. But if you have any of these single layer dies, really take a second look at them. Because a lot of times we just see the whole design, but if we really break it down, we can find a lot of other beautiful designs in the different layers. So I'm just going to go around and clean that little tail thing up. And then I'm going to be ready to start my pages. Okay, so I've got my three different layers. And I'm going to start my pages. So I am just going to go back here and... I am somewhat intimidated by our journal. So mine is very small. You can use as big of one as you want, as small as one as you want. You can do whatever. And one thing that I have learned is to start with my second page. And I'll show you back on that first example that we're kind of following why. But I want my holes, and I'm just going to work in the center of my journal, but I want my holes to be able to line up so I can line up all my layers. And I have found best, after doing my first one, if I start with the second page, it's easier for me to line up the bottom and then come back and line up the top. And I'm just going to eyeball stuff. I'm not going to get a ruler out and measure and whatnot. So what I'm going to do is... I know this is going to be on my bottom page, and then this is my second page. So I need to make a cut in my second page for this piece to shine through. Now, I could lay this piece down and cut out that circle. I could do that, but I want to make sure that it's big enough. So I'm actually going to use this bottom piece as my template, and I'm going to find that little black pencil mark and I'm going to put that at the top and I'm just going to eyeball this and it, it won't be perfect but it will be good enough and I'm just going to take my pencil and I'm just going to draw around the center and then of course I need to cut this out so I'm going to take a little mat and just put that under that sheet now I'm going to tell you this from experience the previous one I made I had two sheets stuck together and cut it out, which is not the way you want to do it because I need this back sheet to be solid. So make sure you just have one sheet on top of your mat and then just take an X-Acto knife. Just take your time, go around the outer edge again. This probably won't be just an absolutely perfectly cut circle. But I did put a new blade in my X-Acto knife. And that did make it a lot easier and a lot smoother to cut around. Okay, so how this is going to work now, and I'm going to save this little circle. Don't throw this away. I know that this piece is going to go in the back. And if I pop that up, there's my third page. And then this piece, which is on my second page, again, I'm going to find that little pencil mark and put it to the top. That's going to go around that edge. So let me do this so you can see that. So this will be my second page. And then... This will be my third page and that will be lined up. I'll just stick it back through that hole and line that up perfectly. So now I need to cut my first page for this top layer. And I want to get that in the center. So what I'm going to do is pick up 
my first uncut page and my second page. And I'm, let me do this and we'll see if I can get this in the right light for you. I'm going to pull this up and I can see the outline of that circle I cut. And I'm going to just, again, eyeball, put a little circle there. So that tells me the center. And then I'm going to take this piece. Here's my pencil mark. Put that up at the top. And I'm going to pick this up because I'm going to do a circle here. And I just want to make sure that that's in the center. So let me just kind of line this up and then I'll lay it down so you can see it better. I'm just going to kind of eyeball that. And then I'm going to lay that down and I'm actually just going to use some temporary tape just to hold that in place for a second. I, let me just turn that just a little more because that's to get that center up there. So I've learned again that an easier way to deal with this instead of trying to follow the outline of my die is what shape could I use to cut it out that would pick up all these little ends. So I've learned if it's circular, cut out a circle. So I took a ruler and just kind of measured to see how big of a circle I wanted. Um, I believe this one, let's see, I think this is three and a quarter. No, this is a three and a half inch circle. So I just took my circular dies again and laid it down. So if I lay this down and I know I'm going to cut out that center part, then I can glue all these edges down. And that will connect, those little edges will connect to my top sheet and hold that all in. So I want to give myself kind of a guide and I actually laid that down fairly well. I'm going to just go back through these open little circles here and just make a little mark. And let me do this and then I'll pick this up so you can see it. And that's just so when I pick up that top layer die, I have a guide for my die cut circle. So you can see where I've just put a little tick mark in that little circle for the die as a guide. And so now let me pick this up. And again, I do these spot checks. I can see underneath here, if I pick this up, maybe you can see if I get this in the right light, that circle. And then I can see that my large circle looks pretty symmetrical around that. Now, let me just take this big die cut circle that I, that's three and a half inches. And I die cut this just using my nested circle dies. And now I'm going to just draw my circle around this and do exactly what I did before. Take my mat, make sure I just have that one top page. I don't want my second page in there and I'm just going to die cut or excuse me, use my exacto to cut out this circle. And just take your time when you're doing this. It's not a race. Okay, and now I am ready to start the next step. So keep a hold of this because we're going to use this in this little circle again. That's going to help us mask something off, but we have our pages ready to go. So here's my little tick mark there. And I'm going to show you how to line these up, but for now I'm just going to lay these down real quick just so you can kind of see where we're headed, but that's how easy it is to make those initial circles or those initial cuts to expose the page underneath. And then this one will go under here. All right, there we go. So now we need to paint our pages. Now I have gone ahead and done that. So we're not wasting valuable time watching paint dry. 
and we're going to talk about the pages. So this is what I'm going to do for this one. I was in a very colorful mood. I've already got my circles cut out and painted the pages and I'm just doing the right hand page. These are pretty colorful, but let me show you. Let's go back to this initial one. When I did the first ones, my pages were painted one color solid like this. And again, I just painted the right hand side. So this one was just painted blue. And this one, I took the negative to the circle, laid it down, painted one color on the inside and then painted the color, the reddish color on the outside. And then on the last one, again, I just painted it this solid kind of PT orangey color. And then I added everything else on top of that. So basically I have done the same thing here, except I've added a few other little stencils and a few other little stripes. So when you first start, I did not start at this colorful level. I started at this basic level and then added colors. Let's go look at this other one here. So on this one, I just did the orange, solid orange. And then this is where I like the stripe. So I just took my brush. If you look at this, this is not painted perfectly straight stripes. I just started with probably the green and then I added the purple and then I added one green going across the other way. Very, very simple, but I loved how that turned out. And then for this last one, it was base red. And then I took the purple color and put it through a stencil, the floral stencil. And that's how I created that background. So we want to paint our pages before we attach our die cuts. So let's go back and look at this. And I'm going to give you the colors that I use for this. And I'll give you the color combinations that I use for the others. So I came up with these using a stencil or a color wheel. And I just looked at my color wheel and I used my Copics and I just kind of took various colors, nothing specific. You know, if I needed a purple, if I needed a green, if I needed, uh, this is more supposed to be yellow and then this is more of an orange. That's what I took. So let me get the right color combination here for this one. So for this group of pages, for my top one here, I have sunrise, which is the orange color and the yellow is canary. On the second page, I'm using boysenberry for the purple and mermaid for this green. Now, I did not care whether they were the sorbet, which if you recall, sorbet has the sparkle in it. So this page is um, the teal kind of blue has sparkle in it. And then the boysenberry is a velvet, which means when it dries, it dries flat. And I'm going to guess these two are shine because when they are dry, I can see on the top, they're very shiny. And again, I didn't really care if it was a matte finish, a shiny finish or the sorbet sparkly finish. I just was trying to match these colors up with the colors that I pulled off from the color wheel. So now that I have my front top page colored. I'm not going to worry about the back yet. I'm just going to worry about the front. I'm going to start attaching my different layers. So the first one I'm going to do is super simple because it just fits through that hole. And that is going to be on my back layer. So that's the one I'm going to do first. And I'm going to do it through this center hole of my second page. So again, I'm going to find that pencil mark and you can do this however you want. I'm going to use some white glue. So pick whatever your favorite white glue is. And I'm just going to put a couple dabs here. And you may have a better way of doing this. But this is how I'm going to do it. I'm not going to try to cover the whole thing. I'm just going to put a little glue in spots. I just need it to hold down. And I want to keep that pencil mark to the top and I'm just going to lay this down in there. And if some of the glue comes out, then just take your pokey tool or something. I have my exacto here and I'm just going to pull that up. So not a big deal. If a little glue gets off, we're not going to see that because it's going to dry clear. 
So now I'm going to take my second page and I'm going to put that in next. I'm doing this one last. And I, this is just from experience. When I started with this one, I found it harder to line up the second one. So it's easier to work for me, small to large. So I'm going to take this one. This will be easy to do as well. And here's my pencil mark right here. So I'm going to hold that to the top. And I'm going to do the same thing with the glue. I'm just going to go around and put some dots of glue. I just don't want it to fall off but I don't have to have absolutely everything coated with glue. And if you have a fine tip for your glue bottle, that makes it easier as well. So however you want to do this, I like to use a wet glue uh, just because I know it will, when it's dried, it will stick to this paint. You could definitely try the, um, sticky dots and see how well that holds to the paint. Okay, so again, there's that pencil mark. I want to keep that to the top. And this just fits right around that circle. So that's easy to do. And I'm going to just press that down. And if I have any glue that comes to the outside, a big blob, I can just kind of scrape that up. Not a big deal. All right, so there we got two pages already glued down. So let's work on our third one. So this one, I'm going to do a little differently. So here's my pencil mark. Start with that. Now, I want to make sure that this is lined up. So I'm not really going to concentrate where these outside edges fall, just as long as they fall on top of my sheet. I'm looking more on the inside. So I want to line that up. So if you need to go back and look at your packaging, you can do that. Or let's see here. Let's pull this out. This will be a guide for us to look at. So we can see how this point goes up to this like tip here, my top tip. And, and it's not one of the full like teardrops. It's kind of behind two of them. So I want to make sure, however I glued that on, that I glue this on the same distance all the way around. I don't want to be off. So like, see here, I need to make that adjustment. So I'm just going to look at that center circle and line up my top layer with that center circle. I'm not going to worry again where my edges fall. So I'm just going to take a second. And once I get it where it's good, I'm going to go around and I'm just going to put some temporary tape just to hold these corners down. Now, when I look at this, it's kind of hard to tell because I've got this stripe going. This may not be exactly pointed to the top. I don't care. My eye isn't going to focus on that. My eye is going to see if this is lined up. So it's not going to be, oh, that's off a little. I'm not going to worry about that. By the time we're done, you're not even going to notice that. So I'm going to go around and tape that down. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of scratch paper and I'm going to stick this underneath just because if I get a little aggressive with my glue and some of it comes off into the center circle, I don't want it going on to my second page. So then I'm just going to pick this up and this is kind of where it's a little fiddly and I'm just going to go around and add a little glue. And again, I'm just doing it on the tip. I don't want to do it all the way down because I don't want to be stuck to my second page. And just enough so that it sticks and it's not going to fall off. Again, I'm not coating every single line. And let me press that down good. And again, if I have some kind of smushing out, I'll wipe it up. But it's going to dry clear. So let me put my tape down to hold those. And I'm going to turn my book around. And we'll just do the next few. So again, this right now is a little fiddly, but it's not that hard. Before the fine tip, I used to use a toothpick. 
I squirt a bunch of glue out and use a toothpick to pick it up. But now that you can get those fine tips for your bottles, makes it much, much easier. Okay. And I'm only going to do a few at a time. I'm not trying to do the whole circle. And then that way my glue doesn't dry and then I'm having to go around again. And then this way it also gives me more control. So let's just do these last few. And then when we get around, it should be dry. Okay. And then I can just make sure, go around, make sure everything is dry. One little tip while we're waiting for the glue to dry. When I apply the paint, I do use my heat gun because I don't want my pages sticking together. And I want them good and dry before I move on to the next step. Because otherwise, you might come back and they're sort of sticking together. So, there we go. We have our three pages Put together so here's our first page here's our second page and then here's our third page so now it's time to start decorating these outside pages and doing some pen work on both our die and on our background so let's go back and look what we did here and then we're going to start and i don't have anything pre-planned that i very seldom do I have anything pre-planned in my mind of what to do. I just do it. Sometimes I like it. Sometimes I don't like it. On the white die cut, I'm going to use the black. Now, you could use a colored Posca if you want. I did use a little bit of white here as well. Um, so we'll just play with it and see what we want to do. But I have the wheel stencil here that I used, and I just took my pen and went around the die cut. So you can play with this and do whatever you want to do. So if I look at the second one, this time I had this die cut out in black paper and I cut out each of these little like teardrops and put those around the page. Again, used a stencil and then a black pen on this inner part here. And for like these little pieces, I just laid this down and used it as a guide. So again, you can do whatever you want. Just let your mind go wild of how you want to decorate your page. And then on the back one, I decided to stencil. Now I can tell you I stenciled this after I put this down because I can see that this is nice and centered. When I did my initial painting here, I did not have this hole cut. So if you look here at my red center circle, it's not quite centered. It was centered on the page when I first started painting. And then I have my yellow one that I just took a brush and went around freehand. And then I did this color last. But when I went to cut my holes, you can see my new center from the die cut shifted down a little. Again, that's just the way it is. If I hadn't pointed that out, you probably wouldn't have thought, oh, she didn't put those painted circles on directly in the center. But I know I did stencil this because it's nice and centered around the circle afterwards. So you can do that as well. I protected that and then stenciled with paint on top of that. And then I went back with a white Posca pen and drew into each of those squares. On this one, I did something a little different on this one. So I used for this die, this is the Victorian die. And it's square. So my openings, this was very easy to determine, have a square opening. I did the same process as I did with the circle. But when I cut this one out, I did this a little differently. So the first time I cut it out, I cut out 
the inner part and just kind of kept the frame. And that I made my second page. And then the center part, I put on my third page. And I decided to use an entire whole die cut for the front. So my first page is actually the entire die cut. So this was a little different. I put it on as a diamond. Let me do this and maybe this will be a little easier to see. You can see how it's on as a diamond. And then my second page, I turned it and put it on as a square and then lined up my last piece of the die cut. So this one's a little different. I used two die cuts, used them in a different way. So again, you guys can do whatever you want. Just let your mind go crazy and how you want to use these dies. On this one, I used this stencil. I want to make sure I have the right one here for you. I used this stencil here as my die cut or as a, my die cut as a stencil. So here it is. And let me just show you. I went around and I lined this up. And let me see if I can figure out how I had this lined up here. I'm trying to get those two circles and I can't remember how I got those circles in there. Here we go. Okay. So I just went around and I drew inside this die cut. I just lined it up on each side and drew inside of that. And then I went back with my pen and just added these circles, added these lines. Here's another one where I just laid this down and colored inside. So you can use your die cuts as well for a stencil. And when I got done with this, then it looked like a little owl to me. And I had the dropout pieces from this die. And that's what the hat is. So this piece right here now I can line this corner piece up. If I line this back up, you can see the dropout piece that I used for like a hat. And it, just because it reminded me of an owl, that wasn't intentional, but that's just how it, how it came out. And then I just used the white pen on the die. So because it was a black die cut, I used the white Posca pen. And then I could outline some of these flowers as well. And the third one, I haven't started yet. But you can see how I just die cut. I cut my die cut in just to two pieces. And then I used another different die. And that's the one that we're using now, the mesmerized die for my stencil. So I don't have the mesmerized die in front of me because we just cut it up. But basically, I did this and laid it down and used that as a stencil. So tons of options. So let's go back to what we did because I have a black or a white die cut. I'm going to use a black Posca pen. So let me get my pens here and I'm going to use, I'm going to shake it up. Um, we could use, I'm going to start with the pen type. This is the 0.7 and I also have, I think this is the bullet one. Let's see here. Yeah, we could use the bullet. And this is the 0.9 to 1.3 millimeter. So I'm going to start with this. The other thing I want to do once again is I'm going to protect my background. So I'm just going to put a piece of scratch paper behind there. And I'm going to shake this up good. And then we're just going to start to play. So I never really know what I want to do. So I'm going to pick something easy. Um, I think one thing I'm going to do on this is I am just going to go down and just add a black line. I have to start slow and easy, kind of decide, and I want to make sure I don't get my hand in that. So let me start over here. And I'm just going to add a black line. Now, if I had known I wanted to do this first, I would I could have done this before I glued my die cut down, but I didn't. So, and you can see I'm not having this beautiful, perfect line. And that's okay because my plaid wasn't painted on.
perfect. And when you work on these, sometimes you may do something you think, oh, I don't like that at all. But remember, our art journals are to explore in. We don't have to do perfection. This will just give us other ideas. All right. And sorry about that. Phone ringing. I can't believe the old landline is ringing. Okay. So there I go. And I like that. That adds something to the background. Now, what could I do in here? So this is kind of where I just look like for repeating patterns. And I'm going to just go around. And I got to take my time. Because I'm trying to stay on top of that die cut. Sometimes... My line's really thin, and then I have to go back and thicken it up a little bit. But this is why I want that piece of paper underneath, because here I know I'm going to have some dots, because I'm not going to be able to stay perfectly on top. And the paint pen does, fortunately, dry really fast. So you'll see my circles aren't perfect. But I can go back and thicken those up. And I'll probably do that here when I get towards the end. But this way I can get my idea down of what I want to do. And again, sometimes I start on a page and then I'm like, Oh, I don't know what else I want to do. I move on to another page. Because I do want to look at all the pages together. So now I'm going to just do this little guy up here. Let's just work on the circles for now. And then we'll think what else we may want to do. Especially when we look at it with the back half. And I'm going to try that bullet tip as well. Because that's, even though it's a little thicker nib, you can kind of lay it on down more towards the side and it will be a little thicker. So if you want a little thicker line, that is another way to get it or, you know, keep it up on the tip and you'll get a thin line. So either one of these will work. And sometimes you have to just do so much, put it up and come back and look at it again. So let's stop with the first page. And this is where I'm like, okay, let's look through and see what, what's going on here with our second page. So let's to go to our second page and work on that. And one thing, when I have something like this white on the dark, the white pops. But if I want to make the outline of this come up a little more, let's stick this underneath there. I'm going to go and I'm going to just outline around it. So kind of like give it a shadow. And when I use a black die cut, and if I'm on something dark, I definitely go around it with a white Posca. So if I'm using a black die cut, I use a white Posca pen. So kind of the opposite color of whatever your die is, whatever your die cut is. But this will make this pop a little more out of this background. And where I stenciled here, I'll pull that stencil out and tell you what that is. But if you're looking at that, it's not necessarily perfectly stenciled either. I had a little bit of paint where it was thicker, kind of ooze out underneath. But again, that's okay. It doesn't matter. So you can kind of see here, I'll point out 
the areas that were a little messy. So that kind of oozed out. But once it dries, you see the overall thing. It doesn't matter that that oozed out a little bit. So this can be very zen-like. You can do swirly lines. You can do whatever. I'm just going to do something. I'm keeping it really simple today. I'm just going to go back in. Put some little marks there. And again, I'll go back and add more. So this isn't something that you necessarily have to complete in an hour. Okay, so I'm going to just look at that so I can see what's underneath there. And now let's just try this other pin. This is the bullet one, um, 0.9 to 1.3 millimeter. And I think I'm just going to go around and I'm going to pull out some of these little circles. And all I'm going to do is circle them. And this might be something where you're like, I'm going to try my white Posca on this. And that may be what I wish I had done. I'm just going to go around. I kind of want to find the same size. And then at times I'm like, okay, well, why did I do that? But this is where you just build. Let's see here. Find a couple more that size. So you can see, too, how much thicker this nib is. If I keep it on the tip, it's thicker. So if I go back to these circles, I might take this one and keep it on the tip, and then that will thicken up those lines. But I can lay it down more on the side, too, so it's thicker. And then here is the pin type. So it's just a little bit thinner. So you can go back and forth if you have a couple different ones. Just try them out. See which one works best for whatever it is you're doing. I'm just going to go through and pick a couple more. Let's see. I'm just trying to go random and I'm trying to find just those smaller ones. I don't want the great big ones. Okay. So let's just change over to white Posca for just a minute. And then we're going to go over and we're going to look at the third page and see what we can do. So this is the pin type as well. Let's see here. You know what? Oh, I got a thicker one. Let's just do this one. And I'm again, I'm just playing. I'm just going to circle one of these bigger ones. And now I'm going to just draw some lines through it. Again, I'm just doing this uh, with no pre-planned thought in mind. When I get done, we may be saying, oh my gosh. But I will keep working on it until I like it. So that's the whole point. So I will go back because I want to go work on that third page. But I will go back and do some more of these. And I may need to so come back because I can see that the purple is kind of changing my white. I'll let that dry and then I'll come back and do a second layer. So sometimes when I do the white over a really dark color, I have to come back and do it again to make it a little whiter. And that's fine. That's no big deal. Okay, so let's quickly look at our third page. And I can obviously put the circle in black around there. But I've got all this open space. So this is probably where I'm going to go get my stencils out and see what I've got to use to fill up this space. The stencil for the, these purple little dots. Let's see if I can find the name on this one. And I cannot... I know it's on the art anthology page and I'm sorry, this one I do not. Oh yes, there it is. It's called bubbles. So it's nice and perfect circles. That's called bubbles. 
I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wheel stencil. This is one of my favorite stencils. So this is called wheel and I'm going to just put this on the outside. Um, I'm tempted to do this in black, but I think we'll try it in white. We'll just see what we think about the white. And if it doesn't show up enough, we can do it in black. Let me just do a few here and we'll see real quick what we think. I think we're going to leave it in white. And I'm just going to go around and put this. And again, I would be taking my time normally. But I want to get as much of this done because I'm not sure that I could get this easily lined back up. And I can repeat this on the other color blocks. Or if I want to do something totally different, I can do that as well. But you can see where this is just take your time. This is the fun part, painting it and then going back and putting your final pen work in. And if you have the color Poscas, you could certainly use a color. You're not limited to the black or white. Now I'm going to keep this just on the yellow. I'm not going to cross over into that orange. And let me see if I can quickly finish this. Because again, I don't think I could easily line this back up if I pick it up now. And if you wanted to use one of the paint colors and do this, you could do that too. You could just stencil in, just make sure that I would clean my stencil if you're going to use it again on another one of the blocks. So if you have paint on the back side, you're not transferring that. So, okay, I'm going to call that good. So even though that's lighter, I can still see that. And I can do my black pen work. We'll just do, we'll just go around the circle real quick. Just to make that pop a little bit. And I'll just do this center one here. And again, I'll go back with that bullet tip and neaten that up. But I would add, I I'm going to go back and add this to, to this other side. But you can see how it starts to build. And this, this takes a little time to go in and add your pin work. But you can see how that all starts to build up. So that will make more sense of how I've gone back. I had that little edge and I added some pen work in there. And now you can see how I have this side colored. So when I'm pretty much done with everything that I'm going to do on these pages, then I'm going to go back and I'm going to pull those colors that I used and I'm going to paint the opposing page. So kind of what I'm thinking for this one, since I have some yellow here, I don't want to use the same two colors. I'm going to pull and I'm going to paint this page yellow. And this is where you want that piece that you cut out because I'm going to put this back in here to add as to act like a mask. And then I'm just going to take a wide brush and my yellow paint and just paint this other side. Very, very easy. Hit it with a heat gun. And then when I go to do this one, I really don't want to use these two colors. So I've got my mermaid and my boysenberry to pick from. Well, when I look at this, I'm thinking, how, which color do I want? I think I had decided since this one has 
the so much mermaid on this side. I'm going to do the boysenberry on the back here, and then I'll do the mermaid on the front. No right or wrong. And when I actually go to do it, I may change my mind again, but I'm going to put this little circle back in here. And I'm also going to put this piece of paper. Whenever you paint, have this piece of paper through your two layers, put the circle back in and then take your brush and paint this across. But if you don't have this piece of paper in, you can start sticking to the other pages behind it. So just bear that in mind. After you do that and you're stuck, you'll remember next time, hey, I need to put this put this page in there. So I will go back and add some more pen work. And then I've got this one up here. And this one, since these are colored, I might just, I don't know, break free and use a colored Posca pen. I want to quickly tell you some other two other color combinations that I've used on these pages. So on this one, I used the same color combination that we used on the one we did today. The color combination for this group of pages is Sea Serpent. So let me show you that one. That's the green Sea Serpent. Grape is the purple and Sea Serpent is Sorbet. So it's got that nice little bit of glitter in it. Tango is the orange and then Ruby is the red. So that's another combination that works good. And then my last combination that I'm going to show you is for these pages. So ocean is the blue and then avocado is the green. Uh, for the orangey color, that's guava and that's sorbet. So it's got the sparkles and then the red is cran apple. So it's a really nice, dark, deep, beautiful red. So those are the color combinations that I used for my journal. But I think you can see all the different, and here's another one I have ready to go, sort of similar to what we did today. But just go through, look at the single layer dies that you have available, how you can cut those up, and just start with cutting up your die into whatever layers that you want. Go through and cut your openings in your pages attach your cut up die cut and then have fun with all the pen work. Just go to town. I've got a lot of area that I can do here. So I hope this inspires you to pull out your journal. If you have a great big journal, you could certainly put a couple of these on. You're not limited to just one and you're certainly not limited to just doing it in the center. So go and explore and play and just have fun. Before we go today, I want to show you what we're going to be doing at the end of the month, which is the 31st. We are going to go back to our waxes and we're going to pull out our embossing folders and we're going to color embossed paper. Super simple. So for those of you who have seen this before, you know how easy and beautiful it is. I'm going to be using both white and black cardstock, but I've got a couple twists I want to show you that will be a little different than how we use these with our single layer dies on cardstock. So I hope you'll join me again at the end of the month. And I thank you for joining me today. And I really hope that you get out some dies in your art journal and paint and just have a good time playing and creating some cut work pages. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you again in the future.